the seller script here, I have 10 talking points. Okay. Um, now I'm not going to go through here and read all this stuff. I'll give you guys uh, access to this uh, at the end of the call, but just talk about the highlights An introduction. Believe it or not, having a good introduction is important. Making sure during the introduction, assuming you haven't talked to this person before, you're getting the property address, you're getting their name and the best phone number. Why? Because I wanna immediately pull up Resimply. I wanna create a new lead and I want to enter in the address, their phone number, so it syncs up when the call's done and their name. And I wanna start entering in my notes from the call right there. Why would I do it any other way? Right? What I, you, you're kind of nuts if you do it any other way. Like you just come in here, you create a new lead, you start entering in their information. And for me, I set up my custom questions to match my script. You'll see it in a second. I got their motivation, the condition, the occupancy, the timing, the decision makers, the roadblocks, and the price. And then this is where I'm going to put my ARV and stuff for dispositions. But right here, why would I do it any other way? And at first, I will tell you, feels like riding a bike for the first time. It doesn't feel very natural to type while you're talking and you might not be able to do two things at once, but it is a skill you can learn. And I noticed once I took rigorous notes when I was listening and asking questions, when I go back to follow up with that person, the conversation is that much better on the follow-up because I wrote in here that, uh, you know, the guy likes model airplanes. Like I'm going to write down everything this person is saying, things that they care about, things that are important to them. They have, you know, have two kids. Like I'm going to take little short notes. I'm not going to write every word he's saying, but I'm going to put these little short notes to myself moving to Texas, right? Whatever it is, I'm going to put all these things in here so that when I go back, I not only did I confirm I listened, but I know the best way to follow up with them, okay? So the introduction, that's what I start with. I wanna set expectations at the beginning of the call. If you just dive right into questions and you don't set expectations about what this call is needing to look like, you're gonna miss a really big opportunity because if you don't set expectations, there's a chance the seller is gonna take control of the wheel and they're gonna steer the conversation and you're gonna be spending five or 10 minutes just trying to get back to the beginning, right? So setting expectations to me is really important. Um, next is motivation. This is the biggest thing you need to spend the time on. You probably already know this, but how can you do better at this? You dig deeper, okay? Ask more questions about what's going on. Get curious and, and understand this. The seller is doing one of two things. They're moving away from pain or they're moving towards pleasure, okay? It, when, when you can understand that, that the seller is either in a painful situation and they're moving away from it, that's when we we turn our tone towards empathy. Oh my gosh, so sorry to hear that. That must be really tough. You know, your tonality is everything. Tonality is everything in this conversation. Everything, tonality. And what type of tone is gonna be determined on whether they're moving away from pain or towards pleasure. If they're towards pleasure, Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. How long have you been thinking about doing that? All right, cool, right? It's a different tone now. And that is a big difference maker in how that call goes and um, what kind of relationship you're building with that person, okay? Next is the condition. People blow past this way too much. I've heard it on my from my own team and I've heard it from other people. Uh, you know, tell me what, what kind of conditions your property in? Good, okay, it's in good. One out of 10, what would you say? That's oh, like a seven. You know, it might be a total dump. Unless you ask these questions, you're not gonna understand and visualize in your head what this house looks like, right? If you're in this business long enough and talk to enough people, seen enough houses, seen enough pictures, you're gonna understand what these houses look like. And by asking the questions, they're gonna paint the picture for you in your head. So has the house been remodeled in the past uh, five years? Is there anything that needs immediate repairs? That's the surface level questions. And then, all right, let's pretend like we're walking through the house. You know, what type of floors you have, bathrooms, kitchen cabinets, and give examples. Prompt them with examples. What are the actual possible answers? And you're gonna get some good information. And then you're gonna be able to react to those things. Oh, okay. 
Sounds like an outdated house. Ooh, that's what's going on? Yikes. I've seen those before and that can cost a lot of money. Okay. And then the occupancy, don't, don't blow past this one. This can be really important to how you can sell this deal. Um, what challenges you might face is the occupancy. I know when we sell a property, disposition it for, for wholesaling, the ease of selling that property comes down to the occupancy. Some of our buyers only want it vacant. Good majority of our buyers will take it either or, but they might want a price discount. And, um, and then there's some that, that don't care at all. Okay. So you got to know that answer timing. This is important. How, how much to lean. If you don't ask, you might not know that they're looking to sell today. Come over to my house and sign today. Decision makers. This is an easy, easy to miss one. If you don't ask this question well enough, you're going to miss the opportunity to find out there's other people you need to talk to roadblocks, right? You might find out that they need help with moving or there's uh, a neighbor uh, that's a problem or something going on. Okay. And then the price, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but dig deeper, get them to tell you the price, get them to conform to your process, right? You're not the decision maker. Take the pressure off of you. You're not the one that knows what to offer. You need to go back to your financial partners. You need to figure out what this property qualifies for, but you need to go back to the partners with a number. Otherwise the partners are just going to come in with a low number. You know, what, 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 what is your price? What do you feel is a fair price for the property? This is the first question and it has to have context. If you don't ask this question of what do you feel is a fair price for your property without context, then don't even ask the question because they need to understand that, you know, and they need to be reminded that they have this problem going on. The house is not perfect condition. It needs this work. And so, um, you probably understand that. And then lastly, you need to set expectations for the next call. I'm going to be making you an offer. We're looking to make a decision when, when we do talk. So be ready for that. Okay. So that's the offer call or the seller script. The offer call is short and sweet. I'm just going to blow past this, uh, to make sure we leave some time. The offer script, you, you need to make sure you re recap everything again. Okay. This is now a second call. It could have been 30 minutes after your first one. It could have been an hour. It could have been later that day or a week. Whenever you got back on the phone, you need to reset the expectations, summarize the motivation, what's going on. You need to talk about the benefits of working with you, even though they probably should know already, just remind them. And then you go in for the offer. For us, we, we talk to the partners, look at what's going on in the market, did some research on what similar properties in the neighborhood are selling for. Looks like other investors are buying fixer uppers like yours from X to Y. Again, we're not making the offer. We're taking the pressure off ourselves. We're floating it out there and giving them a chance to tell us that that's acceptable somewhere in that price. We still haven't made an offer yet. Okay. It takes the pressure off of you. And if they like it, great. Let's lean in. Let's get it narrowed down. If no, Oh, I'm not saying that's my offer. I'm just saying that's what other people are paying. You know, where do we need to be at? Okay. You need to be reactionary. I heard this from a sales guy. I'm keep getting marketed to on Facebook the other day. When, when someone gives you an objection, you need to slow down. You need to verbally express your emotions, your, your thoughts. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, well, that's a little higher than what I was, you know, thinking we need to be at. Uh, are you flexible on your price? What I did right there might seem like not that big of a deal, but I'm telling you right there that that right there, if you can do that kind of stuff, even though you already know what your answer is going to be is extremely advanced and it, it changes the nature of the conversation. And we're, we're trying to figure out together and work as a team to get to a price. So th those are the kind of ways that you need to react. And then, right, we get to we get to an agreement. We send out the contract. We let them know what the next steps look like. If you leave the call and say, I'm going to send you the contract and hang up, you haven't set the right expectations. They'll, they'll probably more than likely ghost you. Okay.